What's up guys, welcome to a new video. Okay, we're gonna go visit a, a garage which is full of supercars. Here we go. Okay, I apologize to the neighbors. Woo! So, what is the occasion today? Well, the occasion today is simply that we are gonna go check out a garage full of supercars. So, I got contacted not too long ago by this local garage that I've actually heard about and I've wanted to go to a bunch. That sound. I've wanted to go visit this place for a while. They contacted me saying there's someone who's very interested in my Ferrari, who's probably gonna put an offer in. So I figured, you know what, nothing to lose just hearing what the offer is, even though I'm not particularly thinking about selling the car right now. Might as well hear what the offer is, take it from there, but also gives me A, an opportunity to drive the Ferrari, which is always good fun, and B, perfect time to go visit this garage and the cars that they've uh, got up for sale there. So that's kind of why I wanted to, uh, to take you guys along on this little adventure this morning. If we downshift a bit. Obviously can't go too fast on these roads here. But yeah, also perfect way to wake up in the morning. Capristo V8, perfect way to wake everyone else up as well. I do realize, so I apologize to anyone that may have heard us driving by just then. And before we carry on with the video, there's still just over, on average, 60% of people watching the videos on the channel that aren't yet subscribed. So if you're not yet subscribed and you want to join me for more adventures of this type, then I'll gladly welcome you into this family that we've got here of passionate car lovers. This is so sketch here, this junction. Can we do this? Yay! Okay. Anyways, all that to say, if you're not yet subscribed, there's a button down below where you can subscribe and I'll see you for plenty more adventures to come. Anyways, let's continue with this one, which is about to involve a tunnel. discovering a new a new like car garage because a you discover all the new cars b you discover the family of people that have kind of put this together and brought this garage to life and you discover the garage itself the location which is often really cool however to meet all these new people today i'm arriving with a gopro on my forehead which uh which is gonna be pretty hilarious and i don't think they're expecting it but let's see how that goes is it this way Ah, dream car. Perfect. Park here, I have no idea where I should and could park. But let's just leave it here for now. Hello? Is anybody home? Take this for whenever I take the GoPro off. Wallet, who knows? I need a mask. Whoa. Whoa. Okay, I'm just gonna say hi and then I'll be right back. But the cars around here are absolutely nuts. Right, I'll, I'll give you a full tour. I'll be right back. All right, guys, we are now inside. Well, we, we were just inside, what am I saying? You know that. We have said hi. Everyone is so nice here. It's been awesome kind of looking around and discovering a new place. And there are so many cool cars. So the simplest thing is that you're back on my forehead. 
and we're just gonna go around and look at the cars. There's everything from rally cars, basically race cars, to really cool daily drivers. This is a 997.2 Carrera 4 GTS. I think these are a real sweet spot because A, they're manual. I think the car might be locked. Yeah, it is locked, but it's a manual gearbox. 92,000 euros on this one. It's got quite a few kilometers, but they're quite rare, these in a really nice spec. Like this one, all blacked out. And it's effectively like a, a really good, I know seen through glass, Sam had done a video uh, pondering on whether this was basically a daily driver GT3. And I think that's kind of exactly what it is. And I love them. I love the look of the exhausts back here, how it's kind of an exhaust going into another. And then the four wheel drive version. So the four GTS, you can tell from this reflective light band on the back. We've obviously got the Crow GT. I know there's a lot of you who are gonna go crazy over this. Close to a million euros on these there. They're soaring up in price. This is the, the classic silver on a brown slash tan interior. Um, really, really nice. One, one incredible car. It's got a, basically a race car engine. I mean, I'm sure you guys all know this already, but race car engine, V10, naturally aspirated over 600 horsepower. Look at the suspension there, put horizontally. It's so, so beautiful. Carbon round back and this noise that comes out of these exhaust pipes, which look like exhaust on a fighter jet. Mm, yeah, what a beauty. This is very rare, only about 300 of these made for the American market, Targa, very, very nice. So you see, classic, modern, bit of everything. LP610, dash so four, you can tell it's a four wheel drive because it's got the four wheel drive front bumper or else this would be a lot more open. And here where it goes in on the two wheel drive, it comes out a little bit, so pretty cool. Spider, very similar to the one I've, I did a video on recently uh, from AR Performance. We've got a Mitsubishi Rally car, 992. I'm not gonna talk about this too, too much because there's so many cars that we're gonna go around and look at the specific parts of the spec. Uh, this is a silver 992, it's a beautiful car, really nice. But I'm more interested in things such as this. GT2 RS in a beautiful color, but what's amazing, there's two of these here. They've completely added all of the carbon options possible. So you've got the carbon hood, obviously. You've got the carbon air vents. These extract the turbulent air out of the wheel arches. Carbon front bumper, and even around the LED lights here, carbon fiber. This is something I'm thinking of doing on my Turbo S because it looks really good, and it's kind of this plastic finish right now, like this on, on my Turbo S. So I'm thinking of doing that. Uh, carbon, obviously, in the air vents, wing mirrors, this little triangle here, which I have on the Toro S, but that's, that's an option as well. Visac pack car, so it's got the carbon steering wheel. Don't know if it's open, nope. Uh, it's got the Alcantara as well. Really, really nice. Carbon roof, basically you, you get the idea, carbon everywhere over the engine, engine cover, and the whole rear diffuser as well, and wing. Absolute beauty, this is, this is really cool. This is up for sale for 345,000 euros. A challenge to Dali. Speaking of Sam seen through glass, one of his favorite. This one's got quite a few miles, but these things are so cool. Is it open? Yes. Look at this, the full carbon fiber door sills. Massive, or well, massive, very kind of enveloping, um, shape-hugging bucket seats. Really nice with the carbon back. A bit of a, well, a bit, very dated. Um, F1 gearbox on these. So yeah, that is one thing that kind of lacks behind, but they're soaring up in prices. It's the first hardcore limited uh, mid-engine V8 um, car that they've made, which we obviously know that then the Scuderia came, uh, the, what came after that, the Speciali, and then the Pista. Um, so yeah, and there isn't gonna be a special version of the F8 Tributo apparently. So that's interesting. Very nice, and the sound these things make, outrageous. Awesome, I believe this is a 993 uh, Turbo, uh, Turbo, Carrera, sorry, <laughs> not a Turbo. We've got a Cayman RS6 under the cover there. This is cool, having a GT3 RS next to a GT2 RS. So you've got the um, uh, violet uh, paint color on this and an acid green on the GT2 RS. You can see how much more aggressive the front bumper is. First of all, this is not in carbon fiber. You can add that in carbon fiber if you want. But on the GT2 RS, full carbon, but mainly see how the front um, grills towards the radiators are so much more pronounced. This is obviously a 0.1 as well. First generation 991, that's a 991.2. So the, the LEDs around front are a bit different and this one doesn't have the air vents on the hood. Ultraviolet, that's the name of the color. There you go, I'd forgotten. Ultraviolet paint. This is a really kind of requested spec on this. Not too much exterior carbon, but it's got the ultraviolet paint, which was the most requested. With the ultraviolet roll, ca roll cage, um, the silver stitching, carbon bucket seats, 
uh, really nice. Yeah, yeah, the yellow pinstripe on the steering wheel, really nice spec. This is beautiful um, and apparently lots of requests on these. I think there's only five Asa Green GT2 RSs um, in, in Europe. So really nice. It's also got all the carbon like the other GT2 RS you saw there. So around the, the LEDs, on the hood, here on the air vents, everything. Oh, it doesn't have the triangle, this one, or the other one did. Um, you've got carbon here, carbon basically everywhere. Really nice spec. It's even got the matching um, stitching inside, and it's a Visec package car as well. We've got the 765 LT, which is an absolute beauty. Really cool. Now, am I the only one who's noticed that these, which are similar to what you have on the GT3 RS, or in the McLaren, ow, I just got, got electrocuted, McLaren logo shape. I don't know if that's done on purpose or not, but I think that's a cool touch if it was. Carbon here on the air vents. The front bumper's not carbon and the lights aren't carbon, but it's basically got uh, all the other carbon around the wing mirrors, um, around here, around back. Yeah, really cool. Really, really cool. I think this looks, it basically looks like a hypercar, this massive rear wing, four exhausts. Yeah, I mean, there's lots of stories of these and the issues you can have with them. Um, don't know if there's been anything with this one, I don't think so, but in terms of looks, it's certainly a pretty, pretty cool looking car. Another classic Porsche, classic Dino. Obviously this is Ferrari, called the Dino in honor of Enzo Ferrari's son. This is a race bred one. Race go-kart, AMG GTR Roadster, super cool as well. Uh, only about 750 of these made. Really nice. What's kind of funky as well is you've got the one single exhaust and then you've got two little exhausts as well on the side hidden. But that's why I was always wondering why you had these two different carbon weaves on the rear diffuser. And that's because this is heat shielding for the hid hidden exhaust. Kind of cool. So you can tell it's a GTR from the wing around back and also just kind of beefed up. It's got the facelift steering wheel inside. Really nice car, gray on black interior. Uh, this is a Bentley, uh, this is a special edition. What was it called again? The Speedster? No, uh, Super Sports, there we go. Super Sports, and the convertibles had four seats. I think the coupes only had uh, front seats. And then, ah, I keep getting electrocuted. What's going on with me? It's also got, has anyone noticed that these look exactly like the seats in a Bugatti Veyron? I don't know. To me, they're basically exactly the same. Comment below if you've ever noticed that as well. i8, S63, this, has a special place in my heart. If you've been watching my channel for a long time, Lotus Exige 380 Sport. I had one of these. It's the first and still only car that I bought, I've bought new. Loved, loved, loved this car. Really miss it. Mine was red with gold accents. You get this accent pack. So you choose your base color and then you can get as an option an accent pack. This one has it in this really nice deep red metallic paint. It's also got all the carbon diffuser. It's funny when you spec the car, you notice all the options much more. I don't think it has the titanium exhaust, this one, but it's got the carbon diffuser. It's got the rear parking sensors and the carbon engine cover, carbon roof. I actually had the carbon roof painted um, on mine because I thought the carbon roof kind of broke the lines a little bit. Manual gearbox, gated manual shifter. Is it open? It is open, look at this. Okay, gated manual shifter. I actually had carbon door sills here, which is quite nice. So red details, very cool. And that gearbox is just beautiful. Very nice. Oh, I miss my Lotus. Such a great car, this. Looks so good as well. Right, we've got a 718 Spider. So this is basically a Cayman GT4 convertible. I mean, there are differences, but effectively what it is, you can make these sound sick. Paul Wallace has been sending me a bunch of videos of these, which sound awesome. Really cool, uh, you know, sunny day cruiser if you put the exhaust on it. This is an Eleanor, um, which, you know, the story behind it, lots of people debate on them, but this is uh, an original car, so these are very, very rare as well. Beautiful, beautiful. I mean, the spec as well is obviously the classic spec we all know. Awesome looking car. I have to admit, this isn't my area of expertise, <laughs> the Eleanors, so comment down below what you think of this, but it certainly looks pretty beautiful. We've then got another Boxster, Spider, first generation, so you can compare the two, very cool looking. It had the bucket seats as well. This one in PVK, interesting. The new one's in manual, very cool. This is awesome. <clears throat> so this is a 997.2 GT3 RS. This is the last GT3 RS they ever made in a manual gearbox, 3.8 liter. Right next to it, you've got a McCann turbo and the Scud. But these are some of my favorite cars. And I think they're gonna soar up in price. This one's at 130,000 euros. <clears throat> it's got about 80,000 kilometers though, so quite high mileage, but 
these things, I really think they're going to keep soaring up in price. They're absolutely beautiful. This spec as well, true to like the 996 GT3 RSs, but then also the 2.7 RSs from back in the day with the wheels and the livery. So, so cool. Is that a car? Yeah, massive carbon wing behind there. Really nice. But there was one version which was more special than this, and it's up here. This is a four liter. You guys all know this. I'm going to try and navigate where I can get the best shot. I can get the best shot up these stairs because there is a whole other floor up there. But that, we're going to go up here to talk about it. If you know a lot about bikes, I'm sorry that I'm just walking past these. They look very cool. This is an MV Augusta, Augusta sorry. Um, I don't know much about bikes, so I'm so sorry. It looks awesome, but I don't know much about it. What I do know a lot about is this GT3 RS four liter manual, one of the most special cars, um, yeah, I think the RS department has kind of ever produced. Manual gearbox, screaming engine. This one must be one of the lowest mileage ones in the world. It has under 10 kilometers. So it's got about six miles on the clock. So, I mean, that just doesn't exist. I mean, how does that car not have more mileage? But it is so cool. It's got that legendary, you know, gray stripe on it. Um, everyone knows the car so well, it is, it's beautiful. I also skipped past, stupidly, the GT2, 997 first gen GT2. Manual gearbox on this as well. It's got this pretty striking wrap. I don't know what you think of that, but that is a beast of a car. It's basically the 997 turbo engine put into a rear wheel drive car. So uh, yeah, turbocharged, whereas the GT3 RS is uh, are naturally aspirated. Um, but yeah, awesome looking thing as well. So lots of Porsches here, but that, that is the, for me, the masterpiece of all of these. Cool little lounge here. Look at this chessboard finished in carbon fiber as well. Nice touch the Porsche sofas and everything. And then we go up here. Ah, I love discovering these places with you guys. Okay, we've got a classic Corvette, Carrera RSR. I mean, how sick is this? Cayman, AMG GT, these have gone way down in price, 90,000 euros for these. Uh, Clio V6. So this is like a little hatchback from back in the day with a massive V6 mid-engine, which is stuck behind there. So, so cool. 3.2 liter Carrera, very nice. Not sure what's under this cover. This is awesome, 993 Turbo S. I mean, this is basically in the same spec. Look at that air vent, so cool. Basically the same spec as my Turbo S now, but this is so much cooler, I think. I mean, I love my Turbo S, but I mean, this is just class. It's even got the yellow calipers like mine. Interesting exercise, so we've got a, the 3.8 liter 991 first gen here, which you can tell they've done the four liter stripe on which is cool. But then there's also, we'll come back to this in a second, the second gen car. So look at these the LEDs right here. This is one of the easiest way to, to tell. That's a straight line here. We'll go see the other ones there. This is also available in manual. This specific one is PDK, but you could get these in manual, whereas you could not get these in manual. And see how the LEDs are a lot bigger around front? And that's what made these uh, quite dated. I do like the stripe, even though it's not a four liter, it does look good. Speciali. Really nice spec, classic spec, blue stripes surrounded by white on a red base. Looks cool, you got the yellow um, brake calipers, carbon center locks, matte black wheels on gloss red paint, very nice. And then the interior, this is such a cool car as well, I love these. So obviously it goes Challenge Totale that we saw down below, 430 Scuderia that we drove here in, Speciali, and then Pisa, of which they've sold over 20 here, but they don't currently have any. 285,000 euros for you, sir, thank you very much. This, um, I'm super excited that there's one here to be able to see one. It's a 488 challenge, and I'm actually gonna be kind of completing one of my childhood dreams in one of these in not long at all. So there'll be a video, of course, but these are awesome. How cool would it be if you could make one of these street legal? This is a 308 special edition. It's called the Coining uh, Special. I definitely pronounced that wrong. Looks very cool. Looks almost kind of Liberty Walk-esque around here with the massive wheel arches or Black Series-esque. Very cool. And then I think this is just a 328 GTB. It's not a GTS, it's a GTB, I think. 328 GTB, yeah, 42,000 kilometers. 110,000, 140,000 for that one. This is an M1B, I believe, McLaren. I, I may have messed that up, but doesn't this look like something that could have inspired the new Elva hypercar? Potentially. Anyways, McLaren orange like the uh, 765 LT down there. But yeah, I mean, 
How cool is how cool is that? Sorry, let me put this back on. Um, so cool to discover these places. I just thought I'd bring you, yeah, for a little drive in the Scuderia, and then um, and then to discover this place. But I mean, it looks pretty. It's pretty epic. And then the view from here. Look at this. You ready? Boom. Car lift to bring cars like the four liter up here. But so cool. Obviously, if you're interested, I'm going to put their Instagrams down below, and hopefully, we'll be able to come back and uh, and do videos soon. But uh, thanks for watching this this uh, this video as per usual. If you found it interesting, let me know in the comments down below. Give this video a thumbs up, and uh, I guess I'll see you again uh, very soon. Take care, guys. Bye bye.